Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how to measure reaction rate from the gradient of a graph. In the last video, we looked at the effect of concentration of reactants on the rate of reaction. We saw that increasing the concentration of reactants increases the frequency of effective collisions, and this causes the rate of reaction to increase. I'm showing you a reaction here. In this reaction, calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to make calcium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. We're going to use excess calcium carbonate, so the hydrochloric acid is a limiting reactant. Now, when we measure the rate of a chemical reaction, we can either measure how quickly the amount of a reactant decreases, or how quickly the amount of product is formed. And generally, this depends on which is easier to measure accurately. In this reaction, we're making the gas carbon dioxide and measuring the volume of a gas is straightforward. One way is to catch the gas in an upturned measuring cylinder filled with water, like this. However, a more accurate method is to use a gas syringe, which I'm showing you here. In either case, we can read the volume of gas at regular time intervals from this scale. We can plot the volume of gas against time, and we get a graph like this. Initially, we get a lot of product formed rapidly telling us that the rate of reaction is fast. This is because we have a high concentration of reactants and a high frequency of effective collisions. Over time, the reaction slows down. This is because the hydrochloric acid is reacting, so the concentration of hydrochloric acid is decreasing. And remember that hydrochloric acid is a limiting reactant. So because of this, the frequency of effective collisions is reduced. Eventually, the reaction stops and no more product is formed. This is because all of the hydrochloric acid has reacted, and there are no more effective collisions. Now, we can measure the rate of reaction at any point by drawing a tangent. I'm going to measure the initial rate, and the rate at 30 seconds. To measure the initial rate, we draw a tangent from the zero time point like this. We now need to measure the gradient of the tangent. To do that, we construct a right angle triangle using the tangent. We then measure the y component, in other words, the volume of carbon dioxide, and the x component, in other words, the time. The volume of carbon dioxide is 40 centimeters cubed, and the time is 15 seconds. To calculate the rate, we divide the volume of gas by the time taken. This gives us a rate of reaction of 2.67 centimeters cubed of gas per second. Here's a tangent at 30 seconds. In this case, we make 8 centimeters cubed of gas in 20 seconds. So this gives us a rate of 0.4 centimeters cubed per second. As you can see, the reaction has slowed as the limiting reactant is running out. Now students often ask whether the length of the tangent is important. Longer tangents are easier to read accurately, so I'd recommend making your tangents reasonably long. Now we can also follow this reaction by using a balance to measure the mass of carbon dioxide released. In this case, our graph would have this shape. But again, we'd measure our gradients in the same way as before. In the next video, we look at how catalysts increase the rate of reaction. 